It may seem as though it took forever for summer to finally get here, but now that it's here, we're dealing with one of the season's toughest byproducts, humidity. Humid days can enhance conditions for people who may fall prey to heat stroke. We caught up with Andy Scanlon of the Pembroke Fire Department to give us some tips on how to avoid heat emergencies this summer. <laughs> Today we're at the Pembroke Fire Department headquarters to discuss heat emergencies, prevention and treatment of. My name is Andy Scanlon, I am a firefighter paramedic. Heat emergencies fall into three general categories. The lowest severity tends to be what's known as heat cramps. It's common in overexertion type scenarios, whether it be exercise, work outdoors, etc. The next most severe category, if you will, is known as heat exhaustion. At this point, somebody suffering from this begins to show symptoms. Examples of such are dizziness, cramping, a throbbing headache, nausea. The most severe heat emergency is a true heat stroke, at which point the person has now lost the ability to sweat and cool the body. Prevention of these heat emergencies centers around some pretty commonplace things that, that a layperson can do or, or things that we will do as professional rescuers, such as removing, first and foremost, removing the person from the hot environment to a cooler environment, and in situations where there is very high humidity, uh, removing that person to an air-conditioned environment is the first step, uh, and then beginning to rapidly cool the body as, as readily as possible. Our ambulances obviously are fully air conditioned. We will air condition them to the coolest level we can get them, uh, as particularly on a high humidity day, knowing that this is the, the call that we're going to. Um, we have uh, sterile water on board. We will, we will soak towels. We will utilize cool packs, cold packs, uh, to, again, to aid in that, in that beginning of cooling process. We're starting IVs and administering fluids to, again, to rehydrate, because when they get to that point where they've stopped sweating, there's no more water left in the system for whatever reasons, you know, for a number of those reasons to, to cool them down. So we are administering IV fluids in the hopes of rehydrating them to allow the body to, uh, to begin or re to continue uh, its natural cooling processes from inside out. The only other message to the general public would be, from a prevention standpoint, is to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. The same things that they tell us as professional rescuers. Um, if you think that you're thirsty, you're probably already a little bit behind. Your internal thirst meter, for lack of a better term, is not always a great indicator of your hydration status. By the time you're thirsty, you're probably already a little bit behind, hydration-wise. So in, in these types of weather conditions, hydrate, 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 whether it be with water or sports drinks if you're exerting yourself and monitoring your, your, monitoring your environment.